In this video, we're sailing around the world part-time and recommissioning the slow boat in Tahiti in May 2018 after nine months of dry storage. Welcome to season three of Slow Boat Sailing, where we give you the stories of the most interesting sailors in the world and our round-the-world adventure. Subscribe. Okay, today I'm getting ready to do a project uh, and I was getting out my toolboxes. I saw that this wrench is completely fused together and rusted and basically ruined um, Hopefully I can buy another one before we leave uh, Tahiti, but You know three years in the tropics three years sailing in the tropics uh, was more than that one could handle So I left this packing flax here for nine months for the mechanic here at the yard uh, to take care of the stuffing box issue that I had uh, he never did that and to this day he's complaining about how he never had time to do it and uh, you know one of the unfortunate things about this yard is that really Yvonne is in charge of the hauling but he says he is not in charge of arranging any other independent contractors outside of painting. He was willing to do painting, uh, probably because that has to do with uh, him using the travel lift. Uh, but he disavowed the uh, engine contractor, that is the mechanic, and for good reason. So I'm going to do the repacking now. I'm going to try the repacking now uh, because I would like to do this while it's out of the water. Uh, I can check the dripping and adjust it uh, when it's in the water. It really was a, like a continuous drip. It was not just like a little drip drip. It was like continuous flow of water. And it's been like that since at least Ecuador. So uh, I'm happy to get it taken care of. You know, and that, you know, it goes back to kind of the incompetence at the, the Marquesas yard in terms of uh, any services they may provide that they didn't get this done they didn't uh, want to get this uh, taken care of and get some extra money from that and you know I it, it, it goes to uh, just the general thing is that you really have to do your almost all your engine maintenance yourself because you'll struggle to find uh, any contractors to do anything for any price uh, in foreign ports. Okay, first thing I noticed was the packing nut was uh, totally loose. I don't know if the mechanic did that when he did his estimate uh, or what. Uh, you would think anybody that knew what they were doing uh, would would notice that, that it's loose. I wonder if it was loose uh, when the propeller shaft was coming uncoupled and if that contributed to that which was a question I've asked several uh, yards and got no answer. So this is the flax that goes in the packing nut and the lock nut to, was completely loose when I found it. The packing nut I needed a wrench but I didn't need to do too much to it to get it loose. Uh, this looks like uh, our smaller version of the flax. This is the one quarter inch size flax. So if you compare the, the new and the old flax, I think you'll see that the Teflon coating on the flax is kind of no longer there. And that might be part of the, the leaking problem. Otherwise the flax looks pretty good, but no Teflon to be seen. This is the packing nut. It did need to be unscrewed with the the wrench. Alright, originally I found one piece of flax, but then I started poking around packing nut and I found the second piece. Got it out with a knife. I actually was able to film it on camera, that second piece of flax, but another way is just if you can get a knife in there and it makes a metal sound, and that's probably, you got everything out, but if it makes no sound, then you probably still have some flax in there. Okay, so this locking nut was totally loose uh, when I got here. Uh, so I don't know if that was causing the dripping, 
because it was just too loose or what. It's like wrapped around the shaft, but you want to have it tight when you cut it. So you want to have it. Okay, so I cut three pieces, but I only needed two. Okay, so I have three pieces here. You can see the old one. It's brown. The flax is... Uh, that's all there is. There's no Teflon. You can see the two new ones. Uh, you know, you have like four wraps and you get maybe two good ones. And I cut out three, but I think the third one's a little too big. Uh, so I'm going to try two wraps. And you want to have the openings so they're kind of at opposite ends. So if you have two wraps, 180 degrees apart, three wraps, 120 uh, degrees apart, and we'll try that. So on this side, so you can see where the holes are about 180 degrees apart there. So I've got the two in, but you can't, you can't see the thread yet. You can still see the flax, but you need to keep on pushing. All right, so I have the two pieces of flax and I just need to keep on pushing till I get to the threads and then I can start using the wrenches. Alright so uh, the bilge pump failed as I was cleaning or the bilge pump float switch failed. The bilge pump works uh, but the the float switch failed uh, because it uh, its wire pulled out as I moved it. It was submerged underwater and the wires were badly corroded and you can see them right here. And as I was bringing it up, it, a puff of electrical smoke came up. At first I thought maybe that was like a puff of some type of fungus, but it was electrical smoke because the bilge pump float switch was on. Uh, I turned it off and hopefully that'll get rid of the connection there. New float switch, old float switch. So the, the new float switch works, it's just need to screw it in uh, and put it down in the bottom of the bilge. So the float switch is installed. I checked all the instruments yesterday and uh, to make sure that they'd be ready once we splash, they seem good. The autopilot seemed good, the chart plotter seemed good, the VHF seemed good. I put on the Genoa yesterday. It also seems that they, they've moved the German boat, which was ahead of me, that was supposed to splash today. So that is good news and hopefully means they're going to put me on the trailer as soon as they're done with the German boat and do the last bit of painting uh, for the bottom paint. And then we'll be able to splash tomorrow morning. So day dropping off the propane and also getting the uh, parts for the mixing elbow for the exhaust system which is a rarity and, and it was a pretty reasonable price compare, uh, compared to uh, what I'd pay in the US, so I'm pretty happy. Time to turn in the rental back at the uh, airport. Ready to go. 7 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah. One of the ongoing problems of sailing around the world is courtesy flags. You always kind of, uh, it's hard to have all the courtesy flags because you don't know where you're going. Uh, so a, a, the, one of the benefits of sailing around the world part time is I can buy them in the off season because I have a better idea of how far I'm going than somebody departing for the US and not planning to come back for six years. Uh, so the, uh, but this courtesy flag is a year old. Looks like we're waving the white flag, but it's actually the Tahiti flag is just really faded. Today's the big day for the first splash of season three. Uh, we're gonna leave the Tahiti Nautic Center today and hopefully if the engine is uh, cooperating, uh, then we'll go up to Marina Tiana, which is about a 37 mile sail, uh, but it could be longer depending on the the quality of the pass. The pass into Marina Tiana is a little uh, narrow compared to uh, the main harbor in Papiete and we'll see how good that pass looks. If there's big breakers we're obviously not going to go in. If I have to detour to Papiete then that would 
probably add at least uh, another six miles to get to Tyana, uh, where I'd like to fill up with uh, diesel for the jerry cans and gasoline for the jerry cans and, and also for the, the diesel bladders. I'm a lot happier where we are this season versus the start of season two. Um, you know, in season two we didn't have the main on and I'd actually put on the Genoa kind of messy. I did get all fueled up before. The, the boat always has a full tank of fuel before I lay it up. You want to fill it all the way to the brim uh, to make sure you don't have any water seeping into your system while you lay it up. We put in a new float switch. We got a, a spare uh, float switch uh, when I went to the Yanmar dealer Sintung in Papieta yesterday. Uh, so the, the bilge should be working fine. The bilge pump. Uh, I topped up the fluids. Uh, you know, one thing that I generally, if I have a lot of time, I would or enough time then I would uh, change the water before uh, starting up but I'm gonna change that and that'll be one of my first maintenance projects coming in uh, you really can't change the oil very well because you can't suck it out very well I changed the oil before the layup uh, and you know I some people will say you should change the uh, the filters, the filters were recently changed before the layup, uh, but my feeling is not to do that because there's a there's a high probability of bleeding issue every time you change those fuel filters. I believe they should be in good shape, uh, but we will see. I do get the exhaust elbow the the other day, so uh, that would be possible to to do while you're uh, laid up. Um, because it doesn't involve the, the water system. Uh, so, you know, the big thing is that you, you have the, the water uh, system that is maybe not in. Uh, you can't use the water cooling system uh, while you're laid up, while you're out of the water. And, you know, that creates a lot of problems. You know, one of the hard, one of the hard things uh, for me uh, here is that there's no potable fresh water and I could I could put uh, wash and stuff with the, the non potable water but I just thought getting out the hose was too much of a hassle this time around um, and that's kind of what is also driving me towards uh, Tiana and Papiete um, Diana has potable water and so does uh, Papiete Marina and those are the places to get potable water. So I've been living off of bottled water and, uh, because it's been so hot and I've been sweating so much uh, but you know the problem is it's like a mile walk to the, the grocery store uh, to buy potable water and then a walk back so it's kind of a heavy thing to lift especially if you're drinking um, I would say at least four liters a day but maybe five just to keep up with the sweating uh, so that that's a that's a big issue you know it's a lot hotter on land than it is on the water so you you sweat a lot less I would say if you're at anchor uh, here in uh, French Polynesia it's okay it's been okay for sleeping um, but it's just, uh, you know, during the day, during the heat of the day, it just gets paint from yesterday seems dry. Okay, uh, 
I'm trying to put in a new starter because once we got in the water we found the engine would not start. Uh, the, the yard and their mechanic was uh, convinced that uh, it was an, a battery problem. Bought all new batteries. Uh, even though my gauges said they were, uh, it was not a battery problem. I bought new batteries anyways. He, at least one of them was dead, but I think most of them were okay. Uh, and uh, that didn't solve the problem. So next thing I'm trying is uh, changing the, putting in the spare starter. You know, one of the things we've had is kind of just accelerated um, rusting uh, at this yard. Uh, and so that was all the problems with the cans. And so perhaps that uh, went over to the starter. So here's the look at the old starter. Like we had three positive connections and one negative connection and the three were on the big terminal and the, the one negative was on a small terminal. All right, you can see the old and new. Obviously, the rusty one's the old one. All right, I've just been towed to this uh, marina slip and by the sailing school here in uh, Port Faden, Tahiti Nautic Center. I'm in the middle of installing the new starter to see if that will get the, the boat started. At least I'm in the water and I can figure out what's going on. And I also can assess what's going on with the uh, through haul leak. This is the uh, new alter or new starter in. Hopefully that'll do it. When I inspected the air filter, it was pretty nasty. I thought the air filter looked good from the outside, but when I looked at it a little more, it looked nasty. So I put in a new one. I got two extras. Uh, so hopefully that'll help the engine. I'm very sure that the air filter won't make a difference with our starting problems, but it may help with the overall running of the engine. Okay, I'm trying to find the source of the gray smoke that happened after the engine started turning over. Smoke. All right, so after we got the engine started and then the the belt started smoking, uh, it was smoking because the alternator uh, wheel was not turning, and we were able to. Yvonne was able to help me, the yard manager. Uh, get the alternator belt turning again by loosening its bolt and now it just turns by hand uh, but in doing that we loosened the belts and of course that alternator belt was smoking so that's a potential source of weakness so uh, I'm just going to change all the belts and impeller right now because that's a job that's easy to do all those things at once Okay, we're changing the impellers here. Don't forget the gasket, very important so the water pump doesn't leak. Uh, this is totally a breakout another thousand day. Uh, you know, the mechanic that they brought in uh, diagnosed that the engine wasn't starting because of uh, problems with the batteries which I disagreed with but you know I didn't have a lot of great alternatives uh, so I bought a new battery and also the yard manager did did show me how battery 3 which was the battery that I got out showed that it was bad so they have these French Polynesian batteries they have this like this red and green symbol on batteries so Potentially that battery had gone bad, although it was showing that it was good and, and charged uh, according to my meters, but I did see the red on it. The other ones are showing green, uh, but I bought all four batteries, which cost me about $900. Uh, so there's, you're pretty much at a thousand there. Um, the starter, 
I, I paid at least a hundred dollars and I'm sure I'll pay at least 200 to replace it um, so I need to get a spare starter now that I have used my spare and the alternator really uh, being rusted out like it was you know just the problem was the boat got really humid and it rusted so I mean in the future I think we might have to air out the uh, the boat some so we might have to open a hatch that is covered from the weather just to let uh, some some air flow go out because it just was too humid in here and that caused the failure of the cans that uh, I'm sure that caused the failure of the starter and the seizing of the alternator wheel we'll see if the alternator actually charges it's a high output Balmar art alternator that we replaced our old one in Panama. We do have the old one, uh, which we could run our engine on. Uh, we just couldn't charge with it uh, was the problem. But the wheel will still turn. <laughs> it just won't put out any energy. If we can find a new Balmar alternator and we can find uh, a new starter we'll definitely get those as spares uh, because you want to have a spare spark starter for sure uh, otherwise we would have been really stuck here uh, and uh, you, you it's good to have a good uh, alternator since that's a significant portion of our charging right now and the temptation is also to to redo the oil now that the boats in the water and we can warm the oil and suck it out so I'll see if I have time, if I feel like it. The, the other constraint that I have be sticking around here in Taravaro is I am just living off bottled water in terms of drinking water and I don't have a car and renting a car is gonna cost me like $100 a day. I rented it for several days and I stocked up with extra water but not enough for five more days. So I really need to go to a marina like Tiana, or I need to go to uh, Papiete. I also left my propane up at Papiete, so kind of just running out of resources here in Taravaro. Uh, so it would be better if I moved someplace else where I could fill up my water tanks, because my water tanks are completely empty for storage, right? Because I didn't want to have algae-ridden water, nasty water. In my tanks I uh, didn't want to have that much in my tanks I ran out my entire tanks before I left but that means when I come back that I don't have any water and there's they don't have potable water here in uh, the Tahiti Nautic Center marina and boatyard here's the old one it looks pretty good uh, I think it was pretty recently replaced at least in the Marquesas but I'll look at my records all right so you have to tighten it there condition this was what was not turning and causing the uh, smoke all right so once you have the water pump new water pump belt you put on the new alternator belt all in time to test them out again In this battery. Fortunately with the French Polynesian batteries the, the terminals come separate. This morning I'm going to try to install the Hitachi alternator in place of the smoking um, Balmar alternator. So I think the alternator and also the starter for the motor work really um, rusted out starter would not work put in the new starter it worked right away but the Balmar alternator was seized and even when we got it unseized it still continued to smoke so uh, I think it's cooked and uh, the Hitachi did work in the sense that it 
allowed the engine to run. Uh, it did not work in the sense that it charged. But there, there was a missing terminal, uh, the positive terminal to the battery. So conceivably, that was the problem with the charging. Uh, and it could charge some. It's not a high output al alternator like the Balmar, uh, but it's conceivable it could do some charging. It's conceivable to let the engine run. Uh, and it seems to be in better condition uh, in just by look uh, than the Balmar R alternator which is installed uh, because it got less rusting in the plastic bag where it was stored. This is the positive battery terminal that's missing. I've created a new terminal with a, a plastic washer and then several other washers and then stole uh, from a non-used terminal the, the head. That was missing in Panama when we replaced it. And this is the negative terminal that is used. This terminal also uh, was used in Panama according to my old videos. Okay, I got the belts off. Uh, I should have changed this with the belts, but I didn't. Uh, next thing is I have to get this bolt up here off. Okay, so here's the wiring. This is the... This one was on the old alternator. This seems new. They have kind of a special box for the Balmar. Uh, this looks like the red, uh, the black wire, I guess, that the, I don't know why we have this red here, so it goes from the, yeah, this is the black wire to me, uh, maybe it's the red, yeah. no, no, that's a red wire, that's a red wire there, and this is a red this blue was not on the other alternator. Looks like four black wires were attached in addition to that uh, box. So the rosy fingers of Dawn are up and I have the old Balmar smoking alternator out. And the plan is to put in the old Hitachi which does not smoke as far as I know. And hopefully that'll go easily. 12 volt DC 60 60 70 SRIG that's the model number. Okay so you're kind of restricted in the the alternators you can't you can get you don't want to get a, a non-ignition protected you want a marine alternator because you don't want to blow up your boat. Um, I think it has to do with the fact that you have propane on a boat uh, that you, you need the extra ignition protection, fire on a boat and we'll sink it and sink you. So the old Hitachi alternator stopped the smoking, the engine was working and that allowed me to sail to Papiete to get some fresh water. S subscribe to the Slow Boat Sailing channel, we give you the stories of our round the world adventure.